Hi everyone! Today I'm going to teach you the second part of a two-part video series covering my Wise Owl shopping bag pattern. If you didn't already watch the video on the applique, you can go ahead and find the link in the description below and also the pattern so that you can catch up with us and uh, get ready to make your own shopping bag. To begin with, you're going to follow the pattern instructions on cutting your your bag material, which is an 18 by 19 inch square. And uh, then we're, we have our handles, which are the same width as the binding that's gonna go around the top leading edge of the bag. They are three inch strips, and on the handles, we simply fold them in half with right sides together. And we're gonna go ahead and sew a quarter inch distance away from the edge of that. And you don't need to worry about securing the ends because they're going to be stitched into the binding. When working with this foot, you just push toward the foot and then it pushes back the other way. So your seam allowance is maintained the entire length. And you don't have to worry about your handles not being the same size when you're finished. Now you can use any type of tube turning method that you like, but I'm going to show you a affordable an easy method using a ribbon and a safety pin. So we're going to take the safety pin and slide this into the tube like that. You just let it go all the way down. And when the safety pin's on the opposite end, you simply safety pin it. Then you simply push the safety pin, start getting the safety pin to go through. And once you see the safety pin is inside of the tube, then you can grab the ribbon on the other end and start to pull the fabric over. And you're basically leading the safety pin through the tube, or I can feel it right here. And on the other end, you move your fabric over. And you can see how it just pulls that other end right through. And we're going to take this now to the iron and press your handles so that the seam allowance is actually centered on the handle itself. Now that we have the two handles stitched with right sides out and the seam on the back side, we're going to go ahead and do a straight stitch, top stitch, or edge stitch along both folded edges to add a little uh, interest to the look of the handle and also to keep it from twisting when we start to wear it or carry it around. Just using a straight stitch again, quarter inch distance away from the folded edge. You can see how nicely that looks with those two rows of stitches and uh, go ahead and repeat that on the other handle. Because I spray starched, I don't have a ish, the issue that happens usually when you do a straight stitch going one direction and then you go the same direction again, it tends to pull the fabric down. That's why frequently you're taught to sew a straight stitch running one direction and then the opposite side go the opposite direction. But with a spray starch, we're actually locking the bias of the material somewhat and that prevents the fabric from puckering. Now I'm going to position the handles on the bag and inside the pattern I, I actually show you how to mark your fabric so that you know exactly where to place them. You can either mark or iron as I usually do by simply folding your fabric apart. I'm going to place the handle right side down right along the edge of that line that you marked before from the pattern and keep the handle out like this so that you can see the wrong side of the handle the entire time as you swing this handle around and go to the opposite side again of the other mark. And we'll go ahead and draw a line of glue again. Slide your finger across and put it down. And if you do both handles at this, you know, on both sides of your bag, that gives that glue just a little time to dry. 
before we place the binding on top of it. Next is to take your bindings that you've already pressed with wrong sides together and we're going to place them on top of each side of the bag covering up the handles. Just draw a line of glue along the edges as before. Just keep sliding your finger across and position. Should you ever glue something down with this and and not forget about it or it slips on you and you're not paying attention and don't realize it until it's already dried, you can take steam from a steam iron and just shoot steam through it and it will separate the materials from one another allowing you to re-glue it. So if any of the glue gets anywhere on the bag just take a damp washcloth and, and wipe it off because it's simply water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. Okay and now grab the side of the bag that you glued first and you're ready to sew your seam allowance. Once again another a quarter inch seam allowance away from the edges. And I like to start in Whenever I'm going to tie a knot, start in and then back up. This prevents your fabric from uh, curling up on the ends as you normally would experience starting off and then trying to climb, up, climb on. So go ahead and sew down. Take your time. This is really important to get a quarter inch seam allowance. This is the front of the bag. And you hear the sound that it made going through the handle. This is why I, I use a 9014 needle for the bag construction. And you can see the binding's going to wrap around, and then the handle comes over the top of it. But we're going to actually stitch our binding by pressing first. And I do prefer to do this type of pressing with my wooden pressers. I find that the iron can be, cannot get, sometimes it doesn't get close enough on the front side. So we want to have a really crisp fold here. And the seam allowance sometimes tries to creep and go that way, so keep your eye on that. If you feel with your finger, you should feel the bulk of the seam on the binding side, not on the bag side. Next step is to Put glue right on the seam allowance and then slide it out. You don't have to do a lot at a time, just a few inches at a time. And then take your binding and wrap it around so that your edge of your binding lines up with the seam allowance that you use to sew it to the front. Now you can cut the ends of your binding straight. You can see that the two ends or the two folds of the binding are actually lined up with each other. And that's that's what we're aiming for when doing this type of binding work. So go ahead now and continue gluing all the way across on the top of both sides of your bag. So I'm using a blanket stitch as that's the theme of this bag. And I'm using the same width I used on the perch, which when you Watch the video on how I did the actual applique on the bird. You'll notice that I did different widths of stitch depending on the size of the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same width I used on the perch on the binding. You can hear the sound of the needle going through all of those layers. So if you think about it, this is a two, this is a flat fold binding. So there's six layers of material that we're going through and then when we come up on the handle you can add a couple more layers to that total so you want to make sure you're using a 9014 needle so that it doesn't break when you go up over these handles and I'm gonna I slow down when I come up on this as well because I don't want the handle to shift side of our bag and I'll be doing the same thing on the opposite side. You don't have to secure your end because you're going to be sewing this into a seam. 
See how beautiful that looks? And then on the back side you've caught the edge. I like to take and do another stitch across here for the handles using just a straight stitch and using a, a quarter inch distance to keep a little continuity in the look. Go forward and back. There's going to be a lot of load on these handles. So adding an extra row of stitching going all the way across, then go all the way back. And then we're going to go ahead and tie knot. And you'll do that on all four of your ends of your handles. Okay, now that we've secured our handles, it's time for the bag final construction. The next step is to sew the seam allowance on the bottom of the bag with right sides together. Now you can pin if you like and you can also use the basting glue to keep your consistency. So with two layers of material, I frequently find that I don't need to do any additional pinning. I just go only about four inches down, make sure my edges are together, and then I do what's called planting the fabric. So I'm holding it securely as I go up to my fingers, and then I stop and gather it again, make sure that the edges are together, and then plant my finger. Okay, now we're going to take and press the seam, and we'll go ahead and use the iron for this. Press the seam to one side. And now we take right sides out. So we're going to do a French seam now. It helps to deal with all of this bulk from our binding. And this would be the time to cut off your excess binding. And starting at the binding edge on both sides of the bag because this is where your eye will land and if you have a little shifting of your seam on the bottom of the bag, well nobody will see that. So we'll keep our eye up here and instead of a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to select about an eighth of an inch seam allowance or maybe just a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch by lowering the needle down and then move the guide over to the needle. Really make sure that you've secured the beginning of this and then we're going to once again make sure your fabrics are together, plant your finger and take your time. You really want to be straight on this first initial seam because we're going to do another stitch after it just a little bit bigger and if the seam drifts or if you increase the width of your stitch you'll have to do some ripping of stitches after you sew the next seam allowance. Okay, we're going to repeat that on the opposite side by flipping the bag over so that we're always starting on the binding end and working our way down. Now that we've sewn wrong sides together, you're going to turn your bag right side out and you want to really grab that corner and pull that in. And do the same on the other side. Push that corner out. We want to make sure that we have a really good press all the way down so that you don't end up seeing your seam allowance or the fabric show through. Now what we want to do is we want to sew past the seam allowance that we sewed before and the first seam allowance was closer to the edge so in this case now we're going to go ahead and move our guide farther away so that we know that we're going to capture the raw edges in the seam allowance. We have a lot of bulk right there so you can take a pack of needles and place it underneath the presser foot to help level off the foot as you stitch on the beginning. Now this is your final seam so you want to make sure you do a good job at the beginning going forward and reverse and 
get all the way to the edge. It's best if you lower the needle, lift the foot, and then slide the pack of needles underneath to help it help you progress across. Lower the needle, lift the foot, and lower the needle. And then continue making sure you're very consistent on your seam. Using the satin edge foot makes it easier by pushing toward the foot and it pushes back the other way so you can keep it straight. Slowing down because we're going through multiple layers there. Now if it doesn't want to feed and this isn't that thick, we're going to go ahead and increase the stitch length. And now the sewing machine can then pull harder and get over those those thicknesses for you. Once it starts to feed normally, then shorten your stitch length back to what you originally had it set at. Reach in the end. Repeat the same on the opposite side. Next step is to open up the corner. We're going to press according to the pattern to help you to uh, sew a perfect seam allowance. You want to make sure that the seam on the on this side lines up with the seam on that side and that gives you a, a nicer looking bottom of your bag basically pressing this up and making a triangular looking shape here. I'm going to go ahead and measure three inches from the corner and then go ahead and fold that material. And as you fold it, make sure that your point lines up with the seam allowance. And this will ensure that you're doing a, a straight seam allowance. Give it a shot of steam and do the same thing on the opposite side. Now you place your needle on that fold that you made with the iron. And we're going to do a straight stitch, keeping your eye on the fold. This foot, you can move the wire over and it will make it so you have something to look at besides the sewing machine needle. Now you just watch the front white part of the guide and keep it lined up with that fold. and do the same thing on the opposite side. Next step is to take the, the point from your corner and lay it down so that it's flat and then where it meets with the seam allowance that's where you want to just do a little bit of a tack. You can even just hand stitch that a little bit if it's easier for you. Now the bottom of the bag has that point held down so it won't flip up on you when you're shopping. Do the same thing on the other side. And now we're ready to turn the bag right side out. And there you have it, a beautiful shopping bag and I made mine double sided which is your choice. This is the, uh, the end of the second part of a two-part video series. Be sure to click on the link below to get to the pattern for the bag and also to find the link on how to do the actual applique process. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make my Wise Owl shopping bag and I, I look forward to bringing you many more patterns. Thanks for watching.